In this video, I'm going to show you different storage units that artists use to store their stained glass. And I'm also going to show you my storage unit and how I built it to store my stained glass. But I need to add a disclaimer. In no way is this video an endorsement of any of these units, nor my unit for that matter, in how to store stained glass. When you have stained glass, you need to make sure that you have a cabinet that is able to take the weight of stained glass. And you also need to make sure that it's strong enough to take that weight. So anyway, let's get into the video. Now in Karen's studio, this unit has been made out of half inch ply. Karen has designed this unit so it can be assembled and disassembled should she ever want to move home. Now the whole unit is on industrial casters and it makes it very easy to maneuver around her studio. Now Karen has a more permanent solution to store other sheets of stained glass. Now Annette uses recycled materials every time a remodel happens around her local mall. A very clever and inexpensive idea and of course with the combination of the metal shelves in her studio it's going to be well and truly very well organised. Now Julie has had a cabinet specially designed to store small hobby sheets and also large sheets. The unit is also on casters if she ever needs to move it around the studio. Now also right next door to where she stores the stained glass is this beautiful black unit which also stores other types of tessera in and it's beautifully lit up as well. Now in Ruth's studio she uses industrial heavy shelving and she needs that to hold the heavy weight of stained glass. Metal dividers also keep the stained glass upright and separated. She also has carpet on the shelving that stops the stained glass from sliding and also adds a bit of a cushion as well. Notice the clear containers on the bottom of the shelving, that adds to the organisation. Ruth sent me this photo of a metal filing cabinet that she saw laid on its side and is also used for storing stained glass. Ruth also has other shelving like this wooden cabinet and it has grooves in that allow the dividers to slide in and out. This makes the storage compartments very very versatile. Since this photo was taken, the shelves have been reinforced to take the huge weight of the glass. Ruth's commercial studio is very well laid out. Here Ruth has used clear round containers to keep all that beautiful tessera organised. Such an amazing visual sight to behold. A next unit is a combination of industrial metal frame and ply shelving, both of which are all on industrial casters, so this unit can be moved around. Karen has used cube shelving with carpet and metal dividers. This keeps it all very neat and tidy. Now here's a close up inside the cube. These are the file dividers that Karen uses in her shelving. And in this photo, Karen stores all her tessera in easy to see through plastic containers that are also labeled. It makes it very organized and very neat. Even when you don't have a lot of room, Kathy has come up with a simple storage solution like this one. It works very, very well and it has metal dividers on strong shelves that are used to organize this beautiful glass. Mary uses cubes or bookcases to organize her stained glass. The stained glass is organized by color hues for easy location. It also looks great as a presentation in the studio. Notice the other clear plastic containers ranging in different sizes around the studio. These organize Mary's other tessera and other beautiful finds. Susan uses large metal storage cabinets to store her beautiful stained glass in. This keeps the stained glass in a dust free environment and also allows easy access to the glass when needed. The metal cabinets appear to be lockable making sure all that beautiful goodness is kept safe. Next door to the grey cabinets is another metal lockable cabinet with a roller door. This unit is used to store other types of tessera and looks like ceramic tiles. These cabinets are a great idea to secure your tessera, especially if you are storing it in a very accessible public area around your home. Here's a close up inside one of the drawers with the stained glass in. In this photo, Jessica has used a couple of vertical desktop sorter units and they've been turned on their sides. This allows very easy access to your glass and is a very neat solution. Notice the very thick sturdy shelves Jessica has used to hold the heavy weight of the glass. Also around these storage units, Jessica has also used clear plastic containers to store other valuable tessera in. 
Well, there's some innovative and creative ideas that different artists use to store their stained glass. And I'd also like to say a big thank you to those artists for allowing me to use their photos. Now we'll have a look at the cabinet that I built to store my stained glass. Now, I haven't got a lot of stained glass. However, whenever you're having a cabinet built or you're building it yourself, it's always wise to build a bigger cabinet than what you need because your glass collection is likely to grow over time. Just at IKEA now, about to go into the underground car park. Okay, here we go. That's the one I want. Kalex in white. So, I'll just grab one of those. Well, I've just gotten back and I've opened the box up just to make sure it's the right colour, which is white. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this on the floor, open it up and start putting it together. So, let's get into it. Well, I've opened up the box and I've laid it flat on the concrete floor just to uh, offer a bit of protection for those shelves. And on the left there, I've got the bits and pieces to be able to put the shelves together. And I've actually put the top and bottom shelves so they're flush on the ends. And then where those holes are, are going to be the uprights for the shelves. Now in between those uprights, I've also put pencil marks. And those pencil marks are going to be extra shelves for the stained glass to lean against. It's going to offer a narrower space uh, for the stained glass. Now I don't have to do that, but I decided while I'm at this stage, I might as well do it. So that's what I'm up to at the moment. And then this stain or this shelving when completed will go into the bottom of this cabinet here. And I've made the measurements so it should fit in there. I've taken the measurements and hopefully it will. But if it doesn't, I can readjust those shelves, but hopefully I won't need to because it's going to be a bit of a pain taking it away from the walls. And uh, that's where I'm going to put it in there. So I'm gonna start doing this and then we'll come back when I've partially completed it. Well, I've purchased some long lengths of 12 millimeter by 12 millimeter pine quad, and I've cut them up to lengths of 380 millimeters. And hopefully these will fit my shelves, although I have measured, but you won't know until you've actually put them in and, and put it all together. And hopefully there won't be a mistake made. And then all I've done is I've got some sandpaper here, just some scrap sandpaper. And because I've hand cut these, I'm really just uh, sanding the edge a little bit uh, because it was a little bit uh, jaggedy from the actual sawing. But other than that, that's about it. Now these will be used to hold up the extra uh, uprights that I'm putting into the uh, stained glass shelving. Well, all the support rails are adhered down. I did have a problem. I expected that white uh, top and bottom timber to be solid and it's not. It's hollow and uh, I wasn't impressed about that, but then it would have weighed a lot more anyway but I've adhered them down with some glue and they should be fine. That piece of timber down here, that MDF, that five mil down there, when I was adhering down one of the rails, I or I adhered the left side down first on all the rails and then I let that cure a bit. And then I got that five mil MDF there, which is the same width as the upper support's going to be. And I just put that in there and then adhered the other support rail down. And that just made sure that I had uh, the amount of room that I was wanting. So I'll wait 24 hours and then I'll come back and continue. But I want to make sure that they're all really, uh, you know, they're really glued down well. Well, I've cut out the extra uprights and these have been cut out of 5mm MDF. And I need to go around the outside edge and just clean up that edge just to get it really nice. I've used an electric saw to cut these out, but if you don't have one, you can also use a hand saw. Now these work really well, but they'll just take a little bit longer. And of course, you'll still have to go around that edge with some sandpaper if you're using a hand saw as well, just to clean that up. Now, if you do use electric saw, make sure you follow the manufacturer's safety directions on how to use that electric saw properly. Now I've cut these a little bit smaller than the actual shelves that came with the unit because I want a little bit, bit of movement in it. So in case I want to remove those shelves at some point in time or the uh, uprights, I can do so. So now I'm up to the next stage and hopefully these will fit. Well, it's the next day and the support rails seem to be really well adhered. So hopefully there won't be any issues with those. So now what I'm going to do is put this together and follow the instructions on the actual IKEA instruction booklet. 
So I'll come back when this is uh, partially completed. Well, it's all starting to come together. I've put the dowel into the uprights and I've actually put the uh, little white screw lock nut thing, I don't know what you call it, but that's in there and that will tighten it all up and hold it together. And all I have to do now is attach the other part of the unit to this part here and then uh, we'll be uh, certainly well on our way. Well I'm getting there, I've only got a few of these to do now, I'm just tightening up the last two now actually and then I'll be able to try the shelf out and hopefully it'll work. Okay, here we go. Oops, wrong way. Perfect. Look at these ones, just make sure that it works in all of them. Yeah, beautiful. So now all I've got to do is put the sides on and this will be pretty well ready. Although what I'm going to do is also put a back on this. Now, the unit doesn't come with a back on it, but I'm actually, uh, I've actually bought some three millimeter MDF and I'm going to, and this will be the last thing I do, I'm actually going to cut the MDF to fit this unit and then I will be gluing that on. I won't be able to nail it because as I said, th these are hollow, so I won't be able to nail it on, but I will glue it on. And I'm going to do that because this is going up against a plaster wall. Even though it's going on this very, very strong metal shelving, it'll be well and truly supported. But I don't want any bits of glass or you know anything to hit that back wall. And I really don't want to lose it out the back there because once it goes through the back there, it's going to be very difficult to, I'd have to get underneath the actual metal shelving to pick up those glass bits. So by putting the back on, it's just going to help me in the long run. So I'll put these sides on and then I will then cut the back and prepare that as well. Well, I cut the three millimeter MDF to size and I made it a little bit um, smaller so that uh, the edges weren't going to be an issue. And uh, I then just put a bit of glue all the way around on the, uh, on the um, unit and then put the MDF on it. And then I also nailed some brads into the sides as well, just to um, hold it there and make it a bit more secure. I found that the brads going into the corners worked really well because that was, uh, they were a bit harder to put in. So it's obviously, the wood is a bit more solid. However, on the edge here, the brads went in really quite easily. But you know, the, the, the glue is going to be the one that's going to do, um, that's going to hold it all in place anyway. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in its place and see what what it looks like with the dividers in it. Well there you go, I've got everything organised in my stained glass cabinet and the dividers I can move out if I want to but the chances are I probably will never do that but they, you know, they are there to be moved out if I choose to. One of the things I'd probably do if I had my time over again with this, I'd probably put a 3mm MDF on the bottom there because I think it will be more durable than this particular surface. I, I don't know how critical that's going to be because it will depend on how durable this particular surface is. Now if I find that any stained glass does slip on this surface, well then I can put some rubber matting in there anyway and glue that down onto the surface, but I think it'll be fine. Some of them are already full, like this one's got my iridized glass in, which looks absolutely amazing. And I've got quite a bit of that because I just love it. Uh, I haven't got these grouped into colors, as you can see. I've got them grouped into a system that suits me, but if you wanted to do it by colour scheme, by all means you could do that in your own stained glass cabinet. You know, I've got things like uh, textured glass, I've got things like clear glass, uh, these are my semi-transparent glass, these are the ones that are opaque, I've got them in different orders and things like that that are going to suit me quite fine. Now this, this cabinet, I'm not suggesting you'll go out and buy one of these cabinets and do what I have done. This is just what I have, I'm just showing you what I did. I'm not recommending it. I'm not suggesting go, go out and buy one and do the same thing. These cabinets are not meant for holding stained glass because stained glass is very heavy. I certainly wouldn't be uh, turning this up vertically and storing glass in it because these shelves would not hold the weight of stained glass because stained glass is extremely heavy. 
These shelves that I've got this cabinet in are extremely heavy duty shelves that I bought brand new and I bought them to hold specific weights like stained glass and, the, and, and crockery as well because they're both very, very heavy. And this suits really well, the measurements of this suits really well to this particular, um, this particular um, racking system that I've got here. So, and I want to keep it on the bottom because uh, it's lower to the ground. So if anything was to happen, it's at ground, you know, it's close to ground level. Whereas I've put it up higher and something happens, well, there's always that risk of something could happen and the higher it is, uh, the more dangerous it could become. So I like to keep anything really heavy at ground level. And I find that, uh, like I said, that works really well for me. On the far side, I've got containers of stained glass and they are in individual colours. I like to have my containers in individual colours and then when I'm doing a project, a mosaic project, I can grab those containers uh, or certainly the colours that I want and put them up on the table and I can work out of them. So it's, I know it's a bit strange, I've got those in individual colours, but these I don't. Uh, but that's just the way it is. I've got containers here as well that I need to sort through because these have bits and pieces of glass that I will need to sort through, which I will do over the next uh, few days. I'll sort through that and also put them in containers too. So anyway, I hope this video has helped you. I hope you've taken something away from it. And like I said, I'm not recommending you do this. I'm not suggesting you go to Ikea and buy one of these cabinets. I'm just showing you what I have done because I know there's been many people commenting on what do people do with their stained glass? How do you store it? So anyway, I hope you've taken something away from this video. If you have any comments, put them down in the bottom of the comments section. And perhaps if you can add in the comments too, uh, what you use to store your glass, perhaps you've had something specially produced or you might store them in boxes, put your comments down there because I like reading through them and I know your comments will help many other people that may be also thinking about how to store their stained glass. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video. Enjoy.